The Atesh Partisan Movement reports that FPV drone operators in one of the units of the 76th Air Assault Division of the Russian Armed Forces are being sent to assault troops. This information was provided by the movement agent Defense Express, says. The UAV operators signed a contract with the Ministry of Defense of the Russian Federation for specific positions, but the division command decided that assault troops were not needed. Complaints to higher authorities have expectedly failed, the Atesh stated. The Atesh does not give details about the exact unit numbers to keep its agent safe. However, such incidents are reportedly not uncommon within the division and have already occurred in many units. We continue to gather information that will help the defense force of Ukraine deliver a crushing blow to the occupiers. The statement reads, The Russian military is reassigning experienced UAV operators from ad hoc drone units to frontline assault squads as per reports from multiple Russian pro-war telegram channels. This move, according to independent media outlet Important Stories in Russia, has sparked criticism from Russian military bloggers, often known as Z-bloggers. Roman Saponkov, a military correspondent, criticized the decision, saying that many highly skilled drone operators backed by extensive volunteer support and private sponsorship are being repurposed for direct combat roles, resulting in increased casualties. This undermines years of effort and contributions by people across the country, he stated, emphasizing that these operators' expertise was vital for intelligence and strike operations. Z-blogger Alexei Zivov linked the shift to a growing number of unofficial and ad hoc units in the Russian army, which has lured personnel available for assaults under the traditional Russian military command structure. He noted that battalions are being shaken up to reinforce assault capabilities as a result. Who's going to join the good old meat grinder assaults? So military authorities started reshuffling staff, Zivov wrote. Vladislav Shurigin, another military commentator, said the proliferation of unofficial military units, which allowed Russian troops to avoid participation in assault operations, has created a stark contrast between the documented structure of the forces and the reality on the ground. There are so many ad hoc units that soon no one will be left to fight. There is an infantry battalion on paper, but on the ground, no one is to send into assault. Whether it's UAV operators, communication teams or logistics crews, Shurigin wrote, citing a source from the headquarters of one of the branches of the Russian armed forces. A wildfire northwest of Los Angeles burned out of control for a second day Thursday after destroying dozens of homes, but officials said firefighters could get a break with fierce winds expected to subside by evening. More than 10,000 residents remained under evacuation orders as the mountain fire continued to threaten some 3,500 structures in suburban neighborhoods, ranches and agricultural areas around Camarillo in Ventura County. The blaze, which broke out around 9 a.m. Wednesday, had zero containment and the cause was unknown. County fire officials said crews working in steep terrain with support from water-dropping helicopters were focusing on protecting homes on hillsides along the fire's northeast edge near the city of Santa Paula, home to more than 30,000 people. Sharon Boggy said the fire came within 200 feet of her house in Santa Paula. We thought we were going to lose it at 7 o'clock this morning, Boggy said Thursday as white smoke billowed through the neighborhood. She initially fled with her two dogs while her sister and nephew stayed behind. Hours later, the situation seemed better, she said. The National Weather Service said a red flag warning, which indicates conditions for high fire danger, would remain in effect until 6 p.m. winds were expected to decrease significantly but humidity levels will remain critically low, forecasters said.
And tell me about what yesterday was like for you guys. Uh, packing up everything that we really didn't need to take with us. <laughs> Just getting the valuables out. Just getting all the, the valuables Mementos. out and the mementos and, yeah. uh, and watching the fire. Um, thoughts on the day? Feeling better about it? This, we're at the tail end here. Yeah, we, it, we're, it's a, it's a bit better. Yes, until it's all out. And, seven o'clock, we thought we were gonna, gonna yeah. lose it. Yeah, yeah, we thought we were gonna lose it at seven o'clock this morning. So, yeah. I saw there were a bunch of crews working here. Does that give you a little peace of mind? Yes, because I left because I have two dogs and my sister and my nephew stayed. And um, there was no support on this side yesterday. Yesterday we had no support, so it was really nice to know that we had support this morning. Yeah, and, and, and and we had the air immediately at seven seven fifteen. Yeah. So yeah, it was good. Definitely a lot better. <laughs> Around 50 European leaders, including Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky and NATO Secretary General Mark Ruta, will be reassessing their transatlantic relations in the hope that the Donald Trump's second U.S. presidency will avoid the strife and political pitfalls of his first administration. Arriving for a summit of European leaders in the Hungarian capital, Budapest, Ruta said he was looking forward to working with Trump again. When he was president, he was the one in NATO who stimulated us to move over the 2% this is very much his doing, his success, he told reporters. He said a major topic at the summit would be the prospect of Russia, North Korea, Iran, China working together. We have to work not only the threat of Russia but also the fact that these four countries work together, he said, which would pose a threat to Europe and the US. Further compounding an already complicated situation, Germany, Europe's troubled economic juggernaut, sank into political crisis. After German Chancellor Olaf Scholz fired his finance minister. It raises the specter of elections in a few months and yet another standoff between the emboldened hard right and the establishment parties in Europe. Ruta said he had confidence in Scholz and Germany's role on the world stage. He said his main concern was the impact of North Korean troops in Russia who he said were deployed in return for Russia supplying North Korea with the newest technological developments. Russia is delivering the latest technology into North Korea in return for North Korean help with the war against Ukraine and that is a threat not only to the European part of NATO but also to the US mainland, he said. At the summit Zelensky is expected to make another plea for more aid as his country fends off Moscow's invasion. The timing is laden with significance as Trump has vowed to end the war, within 24 hours, of being elected, something leaders in Kiev interpret as an impending evaporation of US support.